Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can just so we can get out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right into the video. So, as y'all know, the Celtics just lost their sixth game of the season in an overtime thriller versus the Golden State Warriors, and it's not the end of the world, but there is a lot of negatives that came out of that game. If you want to hear my reaction to the game, I'll put that link in the description. But there was something that really encouraged me, and that was the play of Namias Kata. He had a 10 point, 10 rebound double double in 21 minutes, and I just had to make another video video about his performance so let's get into the film all right so in the first video i dropped about him i think it was the atlanta game the thing i preached was his activity right and on the offensive glass since we lost rob there isn't somebody that just shows that level of of activity on the offensive glass right and just around the rim in general you know chris asmazinius is so much more than that he has the ability to do that but just having someone that's specifically there for screening and doing the dirty work around the rim is just a breath of fresh air so look at this right drew drives right and we've seen this again in the atlanta game he's not the greatest finish around the rim but majority of the times he misses around the rim he gets the board and these are not just one play efforts he missed the board get another one get another one puts it right over his head because this is a great matchup for him against a team like the Warriors, who are small with sarge in the middle sarge did get a couple threes off but i think that is a result of how the celtics wanted to play those pick and fades as you'll see he's a lot more agile and that was enough activity for one clip but you know nimi don't stop so he comes up He's instantly matched up with Moses Moody. That's interesting because in this lineup, you would think he would just guard Sarge, you know what I'm saying? But the Celtics trust him to guard people on the perimeter, no matter who it is. Now, we do play the Sacramento Kings tonight in the second night of a back-to-back. -back. I do not expect him to hold De'Aaron Fox. If he somehow contains De'Aaron Fox on the pick and roll, I might lose my shit. But Moses Moody gets the ball. He's there. He affects the shot, even though he got beat. Great help by Sfee, by the way affects the shot a little bit and gets and gets his hand on the ball so the Celtics can get it back okay so on to the next clip something i've started to notice and something that a lot of other Celtics fans are starting to notice is how good of a screener kd is so when he touches you you're done but he can either hit you with the regular screen or he can hit you with the step up screen a step up screen is when the screener sets the screen facing the opposite baseline so look at this right here he sets it and pot is dead Pazemski's not coming back from this and this allows Pritchard to get downhill and Sarge is already backpedaling he's dead here so Pritchard just comes up shoots the easy mid-range and again it's about activity with Kader right it's back-to-back -back plays this is the second clip where he's making back-to-back -back efforts on both sides of the court switches out on Chris Paul comes back he's on Mose Moody tries to drive his he's there he loses the ball and the whole play at this point is disrupted they can still score but the flow is just not there anymore right he's getting out on cp he's getting back on moody great contest by pritchard and it forces a miss all right here we are the third clip um k is gonna come up and set a screen on wiggins and he's dead look at how much space tatum has now this is obviously gonna be a pull up three of some sort with the space he has here this one in particular isn't a bad shot per se because he's, he's actually open because of the the screen that Kata sets but he could easily just pump fake this or like fake like he's shooting it and dump it off to Kata but again every clip is multiple efforts on the same possession whether he's doing something on offense and coming back and doing something on defense or he's making multiple efforts on the same side look he sets the screen gets the offensive board and gets it out to Pritchard for the assist all right so here we are again with another clip I think Saw just hit it three and Pritchard comes down quickly pushes the pace and get a layup to Kata but again it's about multiple efforts, it's about his activity. Watch again the Celtics' preferred defensive matchups. Drew could easily come up here and switch with Kata so he can be a part of the pick and rolls. The Celtics are comfortable with this. He gets on Chris Paul, right? Look at his hands, makes himself large. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Chris Paul is setting him up for that patented mid range. Nope, hands there, forces a pass out. Sarge gives it right back to him. Kata is ready. He's ready. This is not something out of the ordinary. This is something that he can do. Again, I'll come back to his roots. The first Portuguese player in the NBA, the number one sport in Portugal is soccer i don't think it's a coincidence that he has some feet like this right he's very agile for a seven footer he's contained the dribble and he's ultimately not letting chris paul get a shot up we're running to the same play uh high, high screen and roll with tatum and Kata. one of the few times that andrew well andrew kind of gets his arms around the screen so he's like staying attached to tatum but tatum finally dumps it off and look at this right here are you telling me that we potentially have two seven foot guys 
who can put the ball on the floor and get their own if kate is i'm not saying kate is gonna do this every night but just his teammates understanding and knowing that he has this that should get them to trust to hit him on these roles even if he's not directly at the basket and again it's about activity it's about multiple efforts he's not just doing one thing and taking off on the other end switching right back on chris paul look at this switches sarge he sees sarge driving he has his head down he's not looking to pass at this moment kata comes in helps a little bit and it turns the shot again it's about activity he's getting position on jackson davis even before like he sets the screen for tatum he thinks he's open but no he says he's getting in position to get this rebound right just the activity jackson davis had a hell of a game but right now there's nothing he can do kata has size weight and positioning on him at this moment there is absolutely nothing he can do but kata does his work early so he puts himself in his position to get this offense rebound and get the put back all right let's go back to the screening for a second do you recognize this that's that step up screen clay is dead there's nothing clay can do here it's over and that gets white going downhill against jackson davis who again had a good game but Derek white also had 30. i don't think davis is equipped to do this on numerous occasions white stops on a dime and pulls up for the floater and once again just his activity around the rim if we play a smaller team unless they have a super duper dynamic guard i don't really think he shouldn't play and like the first game i did a little bit of a film session on him was against the hawks and the only reason trey started scoring is because the celtics defensive coverages in the first three quarters were just to play drop so kata didn't actually switch on the trey young obviously that's not probably something that you want even though he is agile for a seven footer on most nights i don't think his minutes should be matchup dependent i think he can play in a lot of different situations but the one thing that's always going to be a constant is his activity around the rim i'm, I'm gonna keep saying activity is my favorite word when it comes to kata he misses again he kind of takes up a wild shot between two people but it does not matter when you get your own board and you hustle for it back. And if I'm not mistaken, this was Kata's or this was one of Kata's last possessions in this game. I would never say anything bad about Al Horford, but it did kind of look like Curry was hunting those matchups. I'm not saying Kata would have done better on the switch against Curry. I would have liked to see Kata get some more run down the stretch of this game. But here's another play where he's just a monster setting screens, right? dead Andrew Wings is dead and he tries to keep his hands on Tatum just, just like he did in the clips before but look at this separation and this gets our dynamic ball handlers one-on-one -on -one with guys that cannot guard them and Tatum smartly doesn't settle for the pull-up and goes straight to the basket and gets fouled but that is the video again if you enjoyed it please leave a like subscribe and share to any and everyone that you can just bring it out there a little bit more and i really believe kata brings you something that you don't have especially on the offensive rebounds i was a good rebounder luke is not really a good rebounder chris apps is certainly a capable rebounder when he's down there but just having a guy that specializes in that and getting off his rebounds and just being a beast in the paint and screening i think he deserves consistent minutes for the things he's shown us but i'm very excited to see what he does against his former team the sacramento kings again if he contains the aaron fox on the pick and roll i will lose my shit. but this is nick i will see you guys in another video peace